Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to uh, today's show. My name is Pony Chang. Um, I'm based in Toronto, Canada. I'm a researcher, practitioner, and educator in acupuncture. Uh, I'd like to first begin by thanking the American Acupuncture, Acupuncture Council for the opportunity to share my research with you. Today, my topic is entitled Secrets of the Three Sisters, Spin Six. Uh, the reason why I entitled this uh, presentation Three Sisters is because um, Spin Six in Chinese is called San Yin Jiao, which translates as three yin uh, um, crossing. So yin is the feminine, so hence the idea of the three sisters. Uh, the image that you're seeing uh, on my um, title slide is uh, a painting by a Renaissance master, Raphael. And uh, this is his, uh, his version of the three graces. The learning objective for today is to introduce you to a portion of the lower leg called the deep posture compartment and its relationship to swing six. I'd like to share with you some of my thoughts about the anatomy of the channel sinew system. And finally, talk about how this understanding of the anatomy um, of this region can be used clinically by changing the angles that we use to needle spleen six and what different results we can expect. Finally, some, I will end up with some food for thought on the possible neuroanatomical mechanisms for spleen six amazing functions and indications. To, be, to begin with, you're looking at a cross-sectional image of the lower leg. Uh, the white bone over here is the tibia, and this bone over here is the fibula. In purple, this three muscles here, the digitorum longus, tibialis posterior, and flexor hallucis longus, comprise what is known as the deep posterior compartment the deep posterior compartment. So if there's a deep posterior compartment, there must be a superficial posterior compartment. And those are represented by the orange muscles, the solia and the gastroc. So imagine your calves, but not, not beyond the gastroc and the solia is the very deep muscle in, um, in, your, in your calves. Now let's take a look at a slightly different angle. This is a posterior to anterior view taken from Gray's Anatomy. And in this picture, the gastrocnemius and the soleus muscle has been, have been cut away to reveal, uh, very convenient for us in the pre-color fashion, flexor digitorum longus on the left, tibialis posterior, and then lastly, flexor hallucis longus on the very right over here. So I would just like you to take the time to, take a, to um, familiarize yourself with this image and get a sense of um, the medial to lateral relationship of these muscles. That is to say, flexor digital longus is relatively more medial, and flexor hallucis longus is more lateral, whereas uh, tibialis posterior is somewhere in between. In Western medical school, Western anatomy, they have a convenient mnemonic called Tom, Dick, and Nervous Harry. And, um, and the, the T and Tom refers to tibialis posterior, the D and Dick refers to the D in flexor digitum longus, and uh, the N in nervous, sometimes they have a version called bloody nervous hairy. The bloody refers to the tibial artery in red over here, the N for, for nerve or nervous in yellow. And lastly, H in hairy refers to the H in flexor hallucis longus. So uh, this mnemonic helps you remember the anterior to posterior order of the tendons that make up the the deep posterior compartment muscles at the vicinity of the medial ankle. Now, all that was just a little bit introduction to familiarize yourself with what's going on in the spleen six uh, region when we're palpating and kneeling um, this point. Um, in this little preview um, uh, of a figure from an up uh, upcoming book, you can see that uh, spleen 6 sits on muscle B, and if you look at the follow of the legend on the bottom, muscle B refers to flexor digitorum longus. But very close to muscle B is another muscle over here, okay? and there's another muscle behind it. And those are the three muscles, the deep posterior compartment that we've just been talking about. And what you did not see earlier uh, on the earlier slide is that that nerve that makes the bloody nervous hairy part, the nervous part of the, the mnemonic, um, continues down and innervates actually the bottom of the foot. And the, it subsequently becomes uh, what is called the deep medial and lateral plantar nerves. Now let's do a little bit of a quick review 
uh, of the channels in your system. Um, because uh, uh, if we're talking about the, the compartment muscles, muscles and myofascia are very close to the traditional Chinese concept of sinews. So it's a good idea to familiarize our, ourselves um, um, to try to see the connection between the East and West. These images are taken from ETNE's book that began the channel of traditional Chinese medicine. And uh, I've only cropped out just the lower portion, um, the lower extremity portion of these meridians. Starting on the left side, you can see the foot tying or spleen channel sinew, and uh, it starts at the, at, the, at the big toe, as we expect the, the primary channel to follow. The foot xiaoyin, the, which is the kidney channel sinew, goes to the baby toe. Okay? So that's an important distinction to, to understand that the spleen, whichever muscles belong to the spleen should have control of the big toe, whereas whichever muscles that belong to the kidney should be able to control at the very least the small toe. And then for the, um, uh, the liver, for drain channel sinew, it is supposed to also have some kind of effect on the big toe. What you're looking at here is a dissection done by Thomas Myers. He is the author of Anatomy Trains. And um, uh, in Myers' work, um, he gives names to various neuro neurokinetic, uh, neuromuscular fascial kinetic chains. And one of these uh, chains is called the deep front line, as you can see from the top right. And in this deep front line, very interestingly, you see the um, Tom, Dick, and Harry muscles that I was talking about earlier. We have over here, he's even conveniently labeled deep posterior compartment, which is comprised of three muscles, which is the terminal longus, tibialis posterior, and flexor halicus longus. They're all indicated by the, the red lines. And what these muscles have in common is that they, sh they not only are all part of the posterior compartment and connect with each other, they are myofascially continuous with the popliteus muscle, which is then continuous with the cap knee capsule, which then is continuous with the adductor groups. And from there, it goes towards the torso. So when I was trying to decode the channel sinew classics and uh, just opposing it with the work of, of of uh, Myers and my own, later on my own subsequent dissections that I'm looking forward to showing to you, um, it became clear to me that um, these three muscles, the posterior compartment, must have something to do with the three sisters or have to do with the three um, uh, muscles of the posterior compartment because it, it, as you clearly can see, there is a crossing, there is a junction of these three muscles going on. And then being flexors and deep inside the calf, that is consistent with the idea of being yin, uh, flexors being yin and extensors being yang, uh, if you, um, uh, which is a relatively common type of association that we have in Ch uh, Chinese medicine orthopedics. So these are the, the image that uh, my group, uh, dissectional images that my group have uh, carried out. And once again, we have the papillus muscle that is can shared by um, all of these three spleen, liver, and kidney sinews. Here you just see on for the spleen uh, sinew channel, because the spleen channel theory says that it has to control the, the, uh, the, the big toe, then it would logically, the muscle that assigned to that would have to be flesh the halicus longus. And uh, interestingly, some of the other uh, big toe movers, the intrinsic muscles, the foot, the abductor, and the flexor halicus brevis muscle, actually surround the tendon of the flexor halicus longus muscle. So uh, we were able to remove that together as a one long, beautiful, continuous chain. Over here on the liver side, we have tibialis posterior. And um, the tibialis posterior tendon actually inserts under the bottom of the foot. And unfortunately, they, uh, uh, I like the imagination of figuring out what myofascial continuity would allow that line to continue all the way to the big toe as the classic seems to be suggesting. However, two out of three ain't bad. Uh, over here on the kidney um, side of the picture, you're looking at the muscle flexor digital longus and the flexor digital longus muscle controls the second through fifth, fifth toe. So if it controls the fifth toe, that, that would be consistent with the kidney channel theory of uh, where the kidney meridians was controlled to the, the baby toe. Um, Similar to the idea that the tendon of flexor halicus longus um, is surrounded by some intrinsic uh, big toe muscles, 
Um, the, the tendons of the flexor digitorum longus is also surrounded by some intrinsic foot and uh, toe muscles. Uh, so they are listed for you here for your reference. So just a quick little summary for what I've been descri uh, describing thus far. The deep posterior compartment, if we think in terms of a, a channel sinew perspective, um, it would, be, would include spleen, liver, and kidney sinew. Um, and uh, in terms of the work that has done by, by Thomas Meyer, the deep posture compartment obviously falls into what he calls the deep front line. And uh, thus far, we have some uh, interesting food for thought that perhaps the deep front line is the embodiment of the, uh, the three in crossings, at least for the lower part of the, uh, of the leg. So what I would like to show you now is some series of videos to help uh, validate and confirm this notion that uh, flexor digital muscle would fall under the spleen channel, um, tibialis posterior would fall under the liver, liver sinew channel, and then um, and the flexor hallucis longus would fall under the kidney um, uh, channel sinew. However, I put um, foot shaoyin or kidney channel sinew in quotations. Um, and I will explain why in a moment. It's a very interesting deviation in the channel theory for the uh, channel sinews when it comes to the kidney sinew that actually talks about how the, the kidney uh, channel sinew uh, partly takes a detour and become bladder or, or foot tie on channel sinew. So this is the, the justification I will uh, describe a little bit further later as to why a point on the bladder meridian, bladder 59, is actually part of the kidney sinew. So we'll start by looking at the video for spleen sex. Uh, just standard insertion location spleen sex. And if, if you apply a current to that, you'll see a very clean flexion of the second to fifth toe. If the big toe looks a little bit flexing to you, it's because the fascia is uh, very continuous. So the big toe is coming in uh, for a little ride, but it's not truly flexing. Let's video it one more time just to show you. Spleen six stimulating um, flexor digitorum longus, which some authors, Warfel, has, uh, uh, have uh, demonstrated is actually one of the dis uh, motor points for this muscle. Now let's take a liver six. Um, I've able, I'm able to demonstrate that liver six, when needled posteriorly behind the tibia, is able to uh, recruit the tibialis posterior muscle, whose function is to uh, in, uh, um, invert the ankle. So here you see liver six or tibialis posterior being stimulated and there's a very clean inversion of the ankle. Now, prior to, before I show you the flexor halicus longer, let's take a look at links through chapter 13. Then that, this is the chapter, actually the only chapter in the, in the uh, Huang Dingye gene that talks about the pathways of the, of the uh, channel sinew. All our knowledge about the channel sinew comes from this one singular chapter. And uh, so here it is in, in, in part. Foot shaoyang sinew starts below the small toe. So no surprise, the kidney is just starting a small toe. Right? It merges the foot tie-in sinew. Very curiously that the, the kidney chapter paragraph would talk about merging with the foot tie-in. If you entertain my idea that the foot tie-in or the spleen is part of the, of the um, uh, um, flexor digitorum, okay? and, um, and uh, so the flexor digitorum muscle becomes the, kin the fourth, uh, the fifth toe. So here it talks about that the, the kidney channel actually merge with the spleen channel. So one could say that here's the kidney channel merging with this, what would become the, the spleen channel. And it diagonally travels below the inner ankle, malleolus. So, so you can see that this was satisfied diagonally traveling under, that's the medial malleolus nodding at the heel, okay, there's a lot of interesting things happening over here in this heel region. Okay, these intersections can be interpreted as nodding. And finally, unite with the Tai Yang and the bladder sinew channel. So uh, earlier I, meant, I mentioned that um, I was gonna show you a video that shows you that uh, stimulating the bladder meridian, um, which is actually gonna stimulate flexor halicus, halicus longus muscle. So it appears that the foot shaoyin channel does a little bit of the dance and borrows the spleen, borrows the bladder prior to continuing on 
to the to the thigh. Let's take a look at a simulation of bladder 59, which has satisfied the Tai Yang uh, from the uh, Qini channel sinew description. And uh, when you apply a current to bladder 59, you get a very nice clean flexion of the, of the big toe. Once again, the uh, surrounding toes, adjacent toes are simply coming for a ride because of uh, close uh, fascial connections. If you were to actually apply resistance against those toes, they wouldn't be really be pushing up. Now let's take a look at some of the pathologists associated with these muscles. These images are coming, taken from Travel and Simons. And uh, I'd like to start with on the right image over here. You'll see the trigger point over here for flexor halysis longus. Looks a lot like bladder 59. Um, so if you have a trigger point in that region, you can actually uh, feel pain in the big toe. No surprise, that's because that's the function of flexor halysis longus. Um, but it's interesting to notice that um, when you have trigger points or, or asher points, okay, when uh, in flexor additional longus and tibialis posterior, as these two images over here shows, you can actually have pain in the plantar aspect. Okay, so this is an important differential diagnosis to keep in mind uh, when somebody uh, presents with uh, possible plantar fasciitis type of distribution of pain. Okay, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the angulation of the knee blade. Okay, I would, if you focus your attention on the video on the left, you're seeing just stimulation of spleen six, which gets you recruitment of the flexor digital longus, which is flexes the second to fifth toe. And this is achieved through very shallow needling. Look, look at the, the length of the needle that's exposed here. Now, if you were to plunge that needle in deeper to, to achieve deeper needling, what you get is what I call a two, in, two for the price of one. You not only get flexion of the second to fifth toe, you get flexion of the big toe through simulation of flexor halicus longus. Why? Because the origin of flexor halicus longus is actually on the fibula. So as you needle deeper, more laterally, you approach the fibula, you can stimulate both muscles um, with uh, one needle. Now, what happens if you to, were to angle spleen six anteriorly towards the posterior aspect of the tibia bone? Then that puts you in the neighborhood of tibialis posterior. Then you expect a very clean inversion of the ankle. Now the very final video I'd like to show you on the very on, on the right is simply putting everything we've seen together. Um, if you need a deep and anteriorly, what would you expect? Well, you expect all three of the sisters or, or, or all three of Tom, Dick, Harry to be recruited. And uh, so you will see flexion of the toes followed by inversion, flexion of one to fifth toe followed by inversion. One more time, that's the inversion of the, of the ankle. Flexion finishing up with the inversion. Okay. So this slide here summarizes the angulation and the target um, that, uh, uh, that is uh, being stimulated when we needle stomach 36. The only thing that I have yet to describe is what happens if you were to needle the, 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 the um, angle the needle posteriorly towards the Achilles tendon. If you were to do that, you end up stimulating the tibial nerve. And this is actually a technique that is used in a type of neuro rehab, uh, particularly a style um, created by Dr. Shi Xueming, Xinao Kai Chao, um, awakening the brain, opening the orifice. Um, the, some of you might have seen um, the movie uh, 9,000 Needles, uh, where they went to Tianjin for a hospital for neuro rehab. Um, that's the, the style of acupuncture that was done in that hospital. So it would be trying to stimulate the tibia nerve and get a firing sensation, electrical burning sensation in the, in the plantar aspect of the foot. So spin six is, uh, is not, uh, is very, very, um, very complex. Depending on how, what is it that you need clinically, you, you need to think about the depth and angulation of this, of this point. I'd like to finish up by just talking a little bit about the function of, um, of a spleen six. Um, spleen six, did you know, actually has an alternate name called Xia Sanli. And this is a mirroring of Zhu Sanli, which is stomach 36. 
which I talked about uh, in my uh, previous uh, 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 Facebook show. And, uh, and uh, so in TCM, stomach 30 seconds, spleen six are often used as a pair, especially for tonifying blood. Uh, so it's interesting to note that perhaps that combination uh, is informed by the idea that stomach 36 is called zhu sani, leg three miles, while swing six has an alternate called, called xia sani, lower three miles, so that they share the three miles in common. But also it's possible that when they talk about the three miles, they're not just talking about three miles because miles early in Chinese also means inside. There's three things inside. Perhaps they're talking about the three sisters. Perhaps that's the uh, indication that, that it's an alternate way of looking at three in intersection. Now, this point is famous for the ability to treat menstrual reproductive and urinary problems. And the actions indication that has been passed down to us, which I won't um, belabor, I've listed here for your reference, also suggests that it has some kind of intestinal function as well. So how can we make sense of this? based on some of the new anatomy that I've been talking about so far. To understand this, we need to um, review the innervation of the organs through the autonomic nervous system. On the left, we have the sympathetic, which is primarily um, uh, thoracolumbar. And on the right, you have this parasympathetic nervous system, which is prim primarily cranial and sacral. And if you to, were to uh, focus on the sacral component, S S234, you'll see that the starting for S2, it innervates the, the uh, large intestine, particularly the, uh, the descending colon, it innervates the rectum, it innervates the bladder, it innervates the genitalia as well. So, as it turns out, and which should be of no surprise, that flexor digital trauma longus muscle receive innervation from the tibial nerve via alpha to S2. So what that means is that when you need a stomach, uh, sorry, uh, spleen six, you are indirectly stimulating the S2 segment, which can provide a parasympathetic innervation to the pelvic organs that I would describe in a previous slide. And therefore, when you stimulate stimulus 36, you are creating an autonomic modulating effect on all the organs um, that are innervated by the S2 segment and also below those segments. So with that, I hope you, that gives you a little bit of interesting food for thought. You, hopefully you will never look at Spleen 6 the same way again. I thank you very much for your attention and please don't forget to join us next week. Uh, uh, our next host is Regina Doran. If you like this video, please don't um, forget to like it, to share it and post any comments. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much.